two thirty to uh, four thirty. So this is the schedule, and the topic that to be discussed is the uh, in three phase locus propulsion and control system. So today we are discussing about the IGBT based three phase dry propulsion equipment. So here the converters we are using that of uh, the control switches that are the IGBT. So and it is used for driving the three phase drives. So it is known as IGBT based three phase drive propulsion equipment. So its the type is MEC 628. V2. Here, M stands for major. E C stands for electronic control. C stands for the so here C stands for the control systems in the major terminology. Here we use the numeric C for the control system. And two eight two eight is the code given for this system. And V2 for the Version two. So this is about the title description. The so next introduction to the DC traction motor. So as you all know, so in electric locomotives, the locomotives are broadly classified into two types. So one is the conventional locomotive, and the other one is the three phase electric locomotive. So in the conventional locomotives, we have been used the DC traction motors, that specifically means the DC series motors. So there are some disadvantages of the DC series motors. So here we can see some of the disadvantages of DC series motors here. So we have commutator and brushes. So which has more maintenance to do with the commutator and brushes. And then next, the DC series motors are Very bulky in size, and due to their bulk size, they occupy more space in the boom. So next, uh, and the other major disadvantages of DC series motors are power regeneration facility. So as we know, the DC series motors cannot regenerate the power. So here, the regeneration facility is not available. So in order to create any regeneration, so we need to use it. Separate converter for the regeneration purpose. So next, so those are the disadvantages of the DC series motors that made us to transfer to the AC traction motor, so specifically the three phase induction motor, that of coil gauge motor. So these are some of the advantages here we can see in this slide of the AC traction motor. So in this, we have no commutators and brushes, so that the maintenance is gradually reduced. And next, compared to the DC series motors, the AC traction motors are very small in size, and due to the small in size, compact in size, so they occupy less space in the bowl. And next, the power regeneration facility is available in the AC motors fitted locus. So in three ways. Electric locus, we have a facility of power regeneration. So regeneration is nothing but the generated power from the locomotive, from the locomotive motors. So is given back to the OHC lines of the traction. So during the braking system, during electric braking, so the regeneration is possible in the three phase electric locus. Next. The as we all know, the three phase electric locomotives are manufactured in the CLW, that is the Chitranjan Locomotive Works, so which is present in the West Bengal. So this, the technology of the three phase locomotives, firstly we acquired uh, through ABB and Atran. And these locomotive converters, in the first, uh, they are GTO technology, gate turn off technology, and are becoming obsolete. So more recent advancements. So the advancements in the power electronics, the changing in the future. The IGBT based converters had been introduced. The advantages of the IGBT has been recognized, and we are using now the IGBT based converters. 
so introduction to the traction locomotive so meda servo drives private limited as we have discussed the igbt technology has came so meda servo drives private limited is the first indian company to implement and develop the uh, igbt based technology in the genus so the igbt based three phase drive propulsion equipment type so that we have discussed mec 628 version 2 for wg9 wg9h wg7 and wg5 type electric locomotive so our system mec 628 v2 is compatible for these locomotives that is wg9 wg9h wg7 and wg5 type electric locomotive So here you can see some of the pieces of the WG9, WG5, and WG7. Next, so introduction to the AC traction motors. Here we have we are seeing the specifications of the AC traction motors here. That is the induction motor, three wheel induction motor. And coming to the technical data, the motor type that we are using in the WG9 and WG7. So is Six FRA six zero six X, and for WAP five it would be six FX seven zero five. And the class of insulation is class two hundred for all the locomotives, and the suspension axial hung load suspender for the WG nine on WAP seven, and that is fully suspended for WAP five. And these are the continuous rating and one hour rating of the. Motors given here, so that is of WAG9 and WAG7. The locomotive HP would be double one five six HP. That is of eight fifty kilowatt each, and two one eight zero is the input voltage that we are giving to the motors, and two seventy amperes of current, and the RPM would be twelve one thousand two hundred eighty three RPM. So and the frequency of that is one that two H. So this is about the AC traction motors here. The rating technical data about the AC traction motors. So next we would see the transformer. So this is the traction transformer. So it is underslung fixed winding type transformer. So the make of this transformers are ABB, CGL, and DHL. And in this, we are having one primary winding and eight secondary winding. So the one primary winding and eight secondary winding. The secondary windings are namely the four traction windings. So each of a one double four nine kV. That is four into one double four nine kV. And next one auxiliary wind supplying for the auxiliary converter here. So that is of three hundred and thirty four kV. And next, one filter winding, so that is of 400 kV. And next, uh, in case of uh, passenger locos, that is WAP7, so we have two hotel load windings, that is of two into 622.5 kV. So and these hotel load windings will be not present in the goods locos, so that is only for the passenger locos for the supplying for the hotel load converter, so which is used for the Passenger comfort load and the pantry car load. So the total kV of the transformer would be the total power rating is triple seven five kV. So this is the basic of traction transformer. Next, coming to the technical data, the traction transformer of the traction transformer, the windings and their power rating, voltage and current rating. Here we can see the HV rating, the high voltage rating. That is the total power that we are having is the triple seven five kV, and the incoming voltage for the transformer is twenty five kV nominal, and the current would be three eleven kV. Sorry, three eleven ampere. And the traction winding, as you know, they be supplying for the line of traction converter, so the power would be. 4 into 1449 kV, and the voltage is 4 into 1269 volts, and the current is 4 into 1142 ampere. And coming to the auxiliary winding, so the power is 
334 kV and the incoming voltage would be from the winding is 1100 volts and the current is 334 amps. Incoming is the filter winding. So the power is 400 kV, voltage double one five four and 347 amp. And hotel load, so it is a 1245 kV, that is 2 into 622.5 kV. And the voltage would be 2 into 960 volts. And the current is 1 to 96 amp. So this is the technical data of the traction transformer, the power, voltage, and current rating. So next. The physical appearance of the windings here, we can see the studs that are coming out from the transformer body. So here we can see the, these are the <coughs> line and traction converter, the studs going to the line and traction converter, traction winding. So in that way, we are having all this. Next, coming to the scope of supply and layout the scope of supply of MEDA. So what MEDA is supplying for the Indian Railway under this project? So we are supplying vehicle control unit two numbers VC1 and VC2 under the SB family. As we know we have the locomotive consists of the cap 1 and cap 2. So in that we will be having the machine room 1 component and the machine room 2 component. So in that under the SB panel we are having the VCU1. In machine room 1, we are having the VCU1. So the exact location you can see here. This is the vehicle control unit 1 location under the SD panel. And in the same way, so here we can see the VCU2 under the SD panel 2, SP2. Next, <clears throat> IGBT based line and traction converter unit 2 numbers, LTCU1. And LTC2 for supplying the bogey 1 motors and bogey 2 motors respectively. So, in the machine room components, here we can see the line and traction converter here and the line and traction converter here LTC1 and LTC2. The IGPT based auxiliary converter unit, two numbers so AC1 and AC2, auxiliary control vehicle 1 and auxiliary control vehicle 2. So the placement and the location of this auxiliary con converter would, would be here. So AC1 and AC2. Next, display unit. So the type of display used here is the LCD TFT 10.4 inches display. So TFT stands for the thin film transistor. So two displays are provided. So one for cab one and one for cap 2. The next one is the traction motor speed sensors and pole wheels. So six number of per six motors. So each motor consists of a speed sensor and respective pole wheels. And next cables. So we are providing different types of cables here. OFC, VCU input output and display communication cables. So one set. So this is the scope of supply. So these are the objectives of major cargo drive. So indigenous developed so as to provide quick response in case of any problems, improvements, and upgrades. And next, uh, to provide an integrated system to avoid compatibility and interface issues, and to provide high level of redundancy. So we are providing a high level of redundancy for each and every sub assembly here. So such as vehicle control unit, traction converters, and auxiliary converters. And to provide the flexible system. So in case of any changes in future by the Indian railway, so we can provide an easy flexible system for changing the suitable parameters in that system only. So these are the objectives of the MEDA. Next, coming to the block diagram. So, block diagram of the control and the propulsion system. Here we can see. So, this is the OHC, so 25 kV, 50 hertz nominal. And from that, we are getting to the Panto. 
Panto to VCD. So here we can see the primary winding here. So this is the primary winding, and this is the filter winding here. And next comes the fraction winding here. So four number of fraction winding. So as we have seen the rating of the fraction winding here. So these are the four number of fraction winding supplying the two line and fraction converter. Two for each. And this is the auxiliary winding. So two winding, two traction windings are supplied for one line and traction converter. So in each line and traction converter, we are having two line converters here. So that is line converter one and line converter two. So the line convert the purpose of line converter one and line converter two are so input supply coming from the transformer is single phase AC that is a one to six nine volt. So these line and line converters will convert them to DC. So and will be stored in the DC link here. So next we are having the fraction converters. So traction converter one, traction converter two, and traction converter three. So these are supplying. So traction converter one, two, three are used for supplying the traction motor. So that is PM one, PM two, and PM three. That is of bogey one motor. So individual converter is supplying for the individual motor. So here the DC link that is uh, created by the line and line converters here that is stored in the DC link. So the DC is taken by the traction converters and then it is converted to the three phase. So variable voltage and variable frequency and given to the motor here. So in the same way, the line and traction converter two also works in the same way. So here we have the windings coming two windings supplying the line and traction converter two here. So we are having line converter three and line converter four, which is used for creating the DC here. So after that we are having the line con traction converters. Four, five, and six. So that are supplying for the bogey two motors that are TM4, TM5, and TM6. So this is the part of the line and traction converter. So after that, we are having the auxiliary wind, which is supplying for the auxiliary converter here. So here we can see. So this part would be the auxiliary converter. So as we have discussed uh, earlier in the scope of supply. So we are having auxiliary cubicle one in the machine room one, and auxiliary cubicle two in the machine room two. So here, in auxiliary auxiliary cubicle one, we are having a AC one that is auxiliary converter one. So in the auxiliary cubicle two, we are having AC two and AC three, auxiliary converter two and auxiliary converter three, and we are also having a battery charger in this cubicle only. So we will be discussing in detail in the further slides. So these auxiliary converters are used for supplying the auxiliary load. And after that, uh, here we can see the vehicle control unit. So vehicle control units one and vehicle control unit two. So that is the machine room one and machine room two under the SB pan. So the function of the vehicle control unit is to Communicate with each and every sub assemblies in the locomotive. So here we can see it has the communication between the line and traction converters here. So LTC1 and LTC2. And uh, here we can see the auxiliary converters also. So it has the communication with it. So it also has the communication with the control stand that is the driver desk and the display unit and CCB braking system control. Control computer braking and hotel load in case of the passenger locomotive and DPC distributed power consist so the, that we can see in the wireless communication that is DPWC. So this is the uh, function of the vehicle control unit. So it has to communicate with each and every sub assemblies in the locomotive and give the control command for the sub assembly. So the terminology we are using the LTC one and LTC two. So in railway terminology, this is known as the SR 
so line and traction converter in the railway terminology it is known as sr here and the auxiliary converter is known as bur so here we are using the line and traction converter the terminology is different between the railways and us next coming to the system interconnection diagram so here we can see the system interconnection diagram so so this part the upper part is the vcu1 and this is the vcu2 so and the communications with different sub assemblies here so in this diagram we can see the vcu1 and vcu2 the so communicating with different sub assemblies and the cards present in the vcu1 and vcu2 so here the orange color bus so the orange color bus wherever you see that is the main bus here so and the green color bus so here we can see the green color bus so that is a redundant bus and the black color one is the parallel communication between the processors here so for speed communication to increase the speed of communication we are using the parallel communication here so that is the dt ram communication that we are using here so inside the vcu1 so we will be having several cards so we will be discussing the about the cards in the further slide so some of the cards are here here you can see the mvcc the control card here and macc the auxiliary control card and mtcn the train communication network and dnc data management computer so here some of the cards so in between these processor cards we are having the dt ram communication and next this is the control card this is the main card in the vcu so that communicates with each and every component sub assemblies here so here we can see so it has the communication between so this is the bus main communication bus here you can see so it has the main communication between line and traction converter auxiliary converter here so in the same way in vcu2 also we are having the main communication between the so line and traction converter and auxiliary converter here and uh, the redundant communication would be with the mpcc the auxiliary control card so here we can see the redundant communication with the auxiliary control card here so with the line and traction converters and auxiliary converters here and so the displays communicate with the dmc card here so data management computer so rs485 communication is done between the mdnc and the display here so in the same way mvcucc as the communication between ccb dpc and hotel loads also and the train communication network so the tcn card having the white train bus communication so these are the usb couplers on the train <clears throat> on the locomotive so through which we are getting the control signal the <clears throat> the path for the control signal. so the digital inputs and outputs here we can see the driver desk sb1 hb1 so because of the input output signal so from that we are getting the input signal and that is passed through the main communication and redundant communication to mbcc and macc card the main computer and the auxiliary computer and the commands the process will be done in the control card here and the commands will be generated so and that commands would be flowed to the digital output cards to driver desk sb1 cubicles sb1 cubicles so on. so this is about the system interconnection diagram so next coming to the vehicle control unit so in the scope of supply we have seen the different sub assemblies so one by one we will be discussing in the further slide so first we will be discussing about the vehicle control unit vc so mc628 is provided with two vehicle control units as we have discussed that is vc1 and vc2 located under the sb1 and sb2 panels and each vcu is provided with a cpu card so as we have discussed in the interconnection diagram the cc card here that is a cpu card the cpu inside the master vcu controls the complete system and operation 
operations based on the signals measured commands received from the local pilot and monitoring conditions of the various equipment so this is a function of the cpu card in the vehicle control unit and the vehicle control unit we see you, it is a motherboard based design so with proper polarization of connectors so in this we have the card that of a plug in type module to prevent accidental insertion into wrong position so whenever we misplace the card so the vcu will not take the card so because it has a feature known as polarization the euro connectors on the back side of the motherboard as placed in different locations so by that the accidental insertion will not be possible here So here we can see the So here we can see the uh, physical appearance of the vehicle control unit here the physical appearance would be like this so in this we are having different number of slots and these are the different number of cards inserted in in the respective slots of given for that card so each and every card we will be discussing in the next slide so here we can see the slot number 1 the slot number 1 is dedicated for the mvcu ps so may the vehicle control unit power supply card in slot number 2 the same mvcu ps the power supply card again in slot number 3 4 and 5 we have the dop card may the digital output card so in the third fourth we are having the digital output card and the slot number 5 we are having the spare card here so in vcu1 it is the spare card and in vcu2 it will be the dop card digital output card and next in slot number 6 7 and 8 so that is the dip card digital input card so in 6 7 8 that is the digital input card and in slot number 9 10 and 11 so these are the spare cards here and the slot number 11 in vcu2 it is a ofc card and next in slot number 12 we are having the dmc card that is a data management computer card and in slot number 13 we are having the acc card the auxiliary control card in slot number 14 we are having the m628 tcm that is a train communication network card and in slot number 15 we are having the maop card so the analog output card which are having we <coughs> we are having the six channels in aop card and next slot number 16 we are having the cpu card that is the main control card mvcu cc v2 and in slot number 17 we are having the aop card with the number of channels so these are the cards present in the vehicle control unit which is so this is a block diagram of the vehicle control unit here so this is a cpu card main control card having the communications between various sub assemblies here so we are having in this we are having the can communication rs485 communication here we can see this so rs485 communication with the ccd dpc and can can communications with ltc auxiliary converters and other vcu and hotel room so and next so data address control bus here we can see acc dmc card and dmc card is communication with the tft displays and tcn card here and line and traction converter with acc communication with the acc so these are the driver desk and machine room signals coming the digital input module coming to digital input module and this information is given to the control card and the commands from the control card is given back to the digital output module and then to the driver desk and machine room 
component and in the same way analog signals also the analog signals are coming from the and coming to the analog input card and an adc converter will be there in the main control computer and then commands will be received uh, the process information will be done in the main control card and then given to the analog output card so this is the block diagram of the vcu so next we will be seeing each and every card here the first one is the mvcu ps the power supply card so the function of the power supply card is to take one to 110 volts from the locomotive battery and then smps operation is done in the power supply card and regulated output will be given so the regulated output are such as 7.5 volts 15 volts 12 volts and 5 volts so these regulated outputs are the working voltages of the other cards in the vehicle control unit so in sense that is the power supply card is giving working voltages for the other card and next we are having two power supply cards here in plot number one and plot number two we have seen we are having two power supply cards in the vehicle control unit so here we can see so these are the cards the power supply card is supplying the voltages here so m vcu ps1 and here you can see the m vcu ps2 power supply card 1 and power supply card 2 so these are the respective uh, <clears throat> so the ps1 is uh, giving the power supply for the dip card dop card so these are the cards here so in case of any failure of the ps1 so the power will be gone to macc card the auxiliary computer card here and the tcn card here so the other card will be getting the supply from the ps2 so in that way the ps1 and ps2 are supplying voltages for the card next coming to the dop card digital output card so the function of the digital output card is uh, the 5 volts commands that are generated from the control card so that are given to the digital output card so and the digital output card switches the 5 volts to 110 volts for operating the contactors relays or etc so this is the function of the digital output card so in the digital output card we are having a 16 bit microcontroller so as we have discussed which is the digital output channel data from mvcucc the control card on the main communication channel and uh, acc on the redundant communication channel so only in the case of main channel failure and each digital output module has a provision for 16 number of channels here so its dop card will be having the 16 number of channels so which can operate 16 number of outputs here so here we can see the digital output module 1 and module 2 the 16 number of channels in each module so here these are the 16 number of channels in each module so dop module 1 has 16 number of channels dop2 has 16 number of channels so these are the cards of vc1 and these are the cards of the vc2 here so we are having the several number of channels having a different output here so next coming to the dip card so the dip card the function of the dip card is the control signals from the locomotive comes under the 110 volts here so whatever the operations done by the loco pilot the control signals will be coming in a range of 110 volts here so we cannot give the 110 volts directly to the control card to process the information so in order so the control card here is 5 volts readable voltages so it can only read the 5 volts here so in order to convert the 110 volts to 5 volts we are having a medium unit this input card so the 110 volts is given to the digital input card and the digital input card has a internal circuit that converts the 110 volts to 5 volts so this card 
consists of a 16 bit microcontroller for processing the information inside the digital input card and we treat the all digital input channels periodically and transmit the information to MVCUCC, the main control card on main CAN communication channel and to MACC, that is the auxiliary control computer on redundant CAN communication channel to whenever requested. So under the cases of the main communication channel failure, the ACC comes into picture and the redundant CAN communication will be done here. So this is about the MDIP CAN. Uh, and uh, the each digital input module has a provision of 24 channels. So as the digital output card has a 16 channels, so in DIP we are having the 24 number of channels for processing the information of 24 inputs here. So here we can see the DIP module. So in VCU1 and VCU2, so we are having three in each VCU, three DIP cards in each VCU. So here we can see the 24 number of channels and the inputs that are getting to the 24 number of channels here. Next, coming to the OFC card. So this card is used for the communication between the VC1 and VC2 here. The vehicle control unit we have the VC1 and VC2. So in between the communication is done through the OFC card here. The main and redundant communication paths are available in the OFC card here. So the MCC of VC1, the main control card of VC1 communicates with the uh, MCC of VC2 via main path. And uh, the auxiliary control card of the VC1 communicates with the auxiliary control card of the uh, VC2 under the redundant path. So these are the, <coughs> so that is about the OFC card there. And next, we will be discussing about the MDMC card. So that is a MEDA data management computer card. So here we can see the physical appearance of the DMC card here. So we have a data downloading option in this. So for that, we are giving the pen drive option and the laptop option for the data downloading and configuration of some software here. So coming to the DMC card here. So it is designed for the data management, display communication, and configuration of configurable and programmable parameters, and to store the data in the required format. So these are the functions of the DMC card. That is the data management, display communication, and the configuration of configurable or programmable parameters, and to store the data in the required format. So DMC receives the data from MVCUCC, the main control card, and uh, ACC, and sends it to the display in required format. And it calculates the lifetime data, manages the false data, and stores in its memory. So here we can see. So this is the laptop and pen drive. So different LEDs are given here. Communication with display, communication with MCC, communication with RTC, the external power supply LED, communication with TFT displays, CAN communication LED, software running, health status, and a space for future use. So these are the LEDs given here. And as we have discussed the pen drive and USB port here. Here you can see. So that is about the DMC card there. So next we will be seeing the VCU LCC. So that is the auxiliary control card. So here you can see the physical appearance of the auxiliary control card. In this, we are having the OFC communication between the line and traction converter, auxiliary converter, ACC. And this is the auxiliary converter, and this is the auxiliary control card of the other VCU. So MVCU ACC plays an important role. So acts as an interface between the CC card and the other subsystems like line and traction converter one, line and traction converter two, auxiliary converters, digital input card, digital output card, 
and uh, other MVPC scheme. So under the when main CAN communication is failed. So and it consists of 16 bit microcontrollers. So working at high operating frequencies, 80 megahertz, and uh, two DP RAMs to communicate with the MVCU CC, the main control card, and the DMC data management computer. So here we can see the physical appearance of the ATC card. So next, coming to the TCN card the train communication network so this card is used for uh, multi connections in the locomotive when two or more locomotives are connected together so this card is used for the communication between the locals so in this we are having two types of communication so one is the wide train bus communication wtb1 and wtb2 here is, uh, we can see and uh, mvb communication so that is the uh, vehicle bus so it has a 32 bit processor which operates up to 200 megahertz operating clock frequency and uh, it consists of multi-function vehicle bus that is mvb the port you can hear see here mvb port and uh, this is for the future requirement so up to now we are not using the mvb port here and we are using the wide range bus wtb so here we can do the demo TV here. And this module works on voltages such as plus 15 volts, plus 5 volts, and plus 7.5 volts DC voltages. So this is the working voltages of TCN card. So next coming to the analog output card, which consists of six number of channels. So this is the analog output card. So MAOP card module drives the analog output loads. So analog output card is used for driving the analog outputs here. So such as T D meter del so that are present on the driver disk. The analog outputs are electrically isolated and such protected and short circuit protected. So inside the card, these are the protections given. And in VCU2 and log output card, uh, along with the TEB meter dial, so it also has the pneumatic brake effort demand output from VCU2. So next, coming to the VCU control computer, MVCU CC. So this is the uh, MVCU CC card, the main control card. So here we can see the communication, the OFC communications between the line and traction converters, auxiliary converters, and MCC, that is the main control card of uh, other VCU. And these are the LEDs for the working status of the control card here. So it is a central processing unit of the entire computer system. As we have discussed, this is the central processing unit, the main control of the vehicle control unit. And it contains a 32-bit microcontroller, various peripherals and interface circuits such as CAN, RS485, DPRAM communications, etc. So these are the types of communications so given in this card. And this module works uh, under the voltages of plus or minus 15 volts and plus or minus 7.5 volts DC input voltages. And in case of so we have talked about the redundancy in the objectives. So here we can see. So if we which you one main CPU fails. So if this CC card fails, the locomotive control operation changes over to the VCU2 main CPU. So it's a condition that the VCU1 has a failure of the CC card here. So in VCU1 other VCU1 CC card fail over to so the controls will be shifted to the VC2 control card through ACC card, auxiliary control card. So this is the redundancy given in the CC card. So continuously communicate with the onboard subsystems like traction converter, auxiliary converter, etc. Here we can see the port, port here. 
for communication. Next, which you control computer, which is used for the control activities. The control activities are given here. The control activities that are done in the locomotive, like uh, pantograph control, PCB control, compressor control, reference, ventilation level computation, wheel diameter calibration, wheel slip control, drive meters multi unit communication and test modes through ddu so these are the control activities that uh, m vcucc card is doing in the locomotive so here you can see the physical appearance here this is a led here the communication between the acu that is auxiliary converter line interaction converter ACC card that is auxiliary control card and NCC card main control card and the 3.3 volt input and 5 volts and 48 volts. So these are the LED status given. So that is about the main control card, the CPU card in VC1 and VC2. And next we will be seeing the analog input card here. So the main the analog input card function is to take the analog inputs the analog input will be coming to the analog input card and the analog input card will send that information to the control card here so the aip module process processes analog signals received from the angle transmitter that is throttle so on the driver desk and bp sensors in which you two only to feed in the microcontroller system so that is the main control card system so next coming to the functions of the vc so what are the functions of the vehicle control unit so here we can see the control stand integration brake system integration traction converter interface auxiliary converter interface driver display unit interface so event recording and energy monitoring future suitable parameters and fault storing and downloading so these are the functions of the vehicle control unit so next we will see each and every function in detail of the vehicle control unit so in control stand integration that is the driver disk so the inputs from the driver disk are given to the digital input card and the digital input card will transfer that information to the uh, VCU that is the control card here. The control card processes the information and then gives the command to digital output card and then to the control stand. So this is the bi directional communication between the so that is the control stand integration. So each VCU is integrated with the control stand cap that is closest in terms of the physical distance. So whatever the VCU that is closest to the cap that will be operating there and uh, both vcus in turn share the control stand information with each other that is the vcu redundancy given and the integration with the control stand includes interface with so what are the driver desk things that are interfacing with the which you are the master controller reverser that is the reverser handle tv throttle handle the angle transmitter and uh, drive meters like the TEB meters from each bogey. The analog output card is uh, operating with TEB meters here. And uh, push button or toggle switches. So, whatever the loco pilot operates. So, these are the switches that the loco pilot operates. So, whenever these switches are operated from the locomotive side, so that the information will be getting to the vehicle control unit. And uh, indication lamp, the digital output card. The display output card will be giving supply for the indication with ANSI. So, for knowing the status of the locomotive. So, this is about the control stand integration. Next, brake system integration. So, here we can see the E70 brake system that is integrated with the digital and analog input output unit and next to the VCU. To the control card 
the whatever uh, information that is coming from the brake system that is going into the vehicle control unit. So existing interface with brake system has been retained. So which new interface with E70 or CCB? So as we know, we have the NOR and the Cavalry type of brake systems in the electric locomotive. So that brake system is uh, communicating with the VCVC through digital and analog input option. So limited bender braking as is available with the existing control electronics. So when loco runs in the regeneration mode and if regeneration is failed, which you commands the brake system to apply equivalent pneumatic brakes through analog output card. So this is the uh, feasibility given in the VCUs. So next coming to the traction converter interface. So redundant can interfaces through separate process given here. The motor or braking charge command based on the throttle. So whenever the throttle is moved in the driver disk, the VCU is integrated with the driver disk command and give the same information to the final traction converter. So the traction converter falls in status feedback. So the line and traction, whatever the faults in the line and traction converters can be uh, retrieved from the DMC card in the VC. So every fault in the line and traction converter is stored again in the VC only. The traction converter faults and fault data pack downloading through VC. So as we have discussed, the DMC card present in the VC. So it is responsible for the fault downloading and uh, fault data pack downloading here. And traction converter and configuration. So traction converter configuration. So if there is any changes in the traction converter, any software updates in the traction converter, so we can directly update the software from the VCU itself. So from the VCU, the EMC card. So we have the USB port there. So for which the laptop is connected and the program is dumped in the DMC card. So this is the traction converter interface. And next functions achieved through integration of VCU and LDC. So what are the functions that uh, that are going to be achieved due to the interface are the wheel slip control and the wheel diameter calibration. So this is about the line and traction converter interface and uh, auxiliary converter interface. So redundant can interfaces through separate process and auxiliary converter commands from the VCU falls and status feedback back to the VCU. So as we have discussed in the line and traction converter, the feedback will be coming to the VCU. The data is stored in the VCU itself. So in the same way for the auxiliary converter also, the feedback and the data that will be stored in the VCU itself. So here we can see the point that auxiliary converter falls and fall data packs down. By the both VCU through RS485. And uh, appropriate selections from the driver disk, driver display screen are monitored and suitable actions taken by the VCU. And did you request data based on the screen displayed and which you provide the data for the display on continuous basis? And some operations that are possible from the display are viewing the current status of the locomotives 
and uh, traction motor cutoff. So in case of any uh, fault in the traction motors, so we can directly cut out the traction motors from the display itself. And then it's engine control mode. So this is the engine mode so that we can operate from the display itself and test mode for maintenance and basic settings like date and time, local type and shed name. So these are the operations, some of the operations that can be done from the display due to the interface with the VCU. And next coming to the event recording and the energy monitor. As we have discussed the event recording and energy monitoring that is done in the DMC card data management computer. So we will see that here. So it will store the data in the non-volatile flash memory uh, in the regular interval and energy monitoring by VCU based on inputs from the fraction converter. And lifetime counters for energy consumption, regeneration and distance travel, etc. And event recording data can be used for the accident analysis. And user setable parameters, it has, uh, which is provided with user setable parameters within the safe limit to the extent possible and improves the flexibility of the system. The same software can be used for both the WAG9H and the WAP7 locomotives by just changing a few programmable parameters. So all configurable parameters are programmable through the menu driven PC software here. So whatever the parameters that are provided in the PC software that are done in the DMC for any changes here. And fault storing and downloading. So here we can see the DMC card will be having the USB interface. So for which we can connect the laptop or PC here. So in that we are having the non-volatile memory and that communicate with the CPU card here. And VCU is available to show the locomotive related calls and all subsystem calls in the non-volatile memory with date and time stamps and uh, download calls with the PC or pen drive option through USB port and call data and data packs from all systems available in VCU world. and can view the fault analysis report with PC software provided. So for the data analysis. And next, uh, coming to the redundancy that is provided in the vehicle control. So here we can see. So these are the cases. Uh, whenever the module fails, these are the different cases, and the redundant option for the case failure. So first one here we can see the main control computer MVCUCC in VC1. So in case of MVCUCC failure. The redundant option is the VCU2 will take over the control function and interfaces with the other system operation and display. And the auxiliary communication computer MACC and VCU1. So there will be no effect because the master control that is the main control card MVCUCC is already there. And any digital input or output modules of either VC. So no effect as important input or output are duplicated in two cards. So whatever the input channels that will be duplicated that are duplicated in the other cards also. And the physical CAN OFC cables. So redundant CAN communication is provided through MACC. So there will be no effect in that. So whenever the analog input card failure, so AAP card failure or a throttle position, so there will be the redundant option is there. The TEB demand is done by the auxiliary contact contact inputs the TB <clears throat> will be changing from 0, 33 percent, 66 percent and 100 percent contacts in the throttle controller and analog output card so TEB that is supplying for the TEB emitters so there will be uh, the redundant option is that in the driver display so we will be having the TEB emitters in the driver display also the driver can observe that in the driver display. So these are the redundant options for the module sales. Here. So this is a VCU maintenance here. 
So here you can see some of the maintenance. So overall unit is maintenance free. So during AOH once in a year, following checks are to be carried out. So these are the checks here. Whatever in AOH blow the dust from the entire unit and check input output cable connection then open the unit and ensure the connections of all assemblies check for wear and tear of bolts and check the inlet here below so this is the regular maintenance once in a year so next uh, till then we have completed the vehicle control unit so this is about the vehicle control unit here so after that uh, we will be going to the uh, LCD TFT based driver display. So up to now the BCU the vehicle control in is clear. So if you have any doubts in the vehicle control unit, so we can discuss or we will move further for the driver display. So next coming to the LCD TFT based driver display here. So this is the physical appearance of the driver display. Here we can see the driver display. So it communicates with the vehicle control unit system through RS485 link. And it displays the data sent by the VCU system in graphical as well as in the text format. So the Type of this display is MDS5740 here and it has an own power supply module for generating the regulated power supplies required for the display electronics. And these regulated power supplies are generated from the nominal 110 volts, so that is taken from the locomotive back. So here we can see the display communication. The MCC, the main control card and the auxiliary control card giving the information to the DMC card here, data management computer. And from the data management computer, so the information is converted to the required format that is given to the display system. The display in cab one and display in cab two through the RS485 bus. So in this way, we are having the three sections here. The section one will be contain, containing of these parameters here. The section two will be containing of the uh, LED indications. And section three will be having these parameters here. So under the main menu, so we are having several options here, such as vehicle diagnosis, and the process information, train configuration, self test, digital input status, digital output status, and user programmable screen. So, so when you click on the vehicle control, sorry, vehicle diagnosis, we will be having these three options. So that are the local status, browse mode, and diagnostic mode. And next, if you select that local status, so we will be having the screen like this. So we will be appearing the screen like this. So in this every thing that the local status you can see here. So the main power. So if it is healthy, it will be healthy here. We can have healthy, the green color. And if anything is failed, so here we can see the indication of failed here. So that the local status can be viewed here in this display. Next coming to the diagnostic. Menu. So if we select the diagnostic menu, so again we are having the three options here. So that is the entire active, all active faults, and latest active faults. 
so enter in the option enter are to false we are having the all false here so the display of the false will be like this the date and time will be shown here the fault code the fault messages and the frequency of the fault and the status whether it is active or inactive so in all false the same display will be shown here next in latest false the latest false will be shown in the display and next uh, when we click on the process information menu on the main menu so the several options such as energy consumption load information software version motor temperature simulation mode and engine mode so these are the options displayed under the process information menu so we can select any of the options so if we select the engine mode so for the engine mode so we are having some of the conditions to go to the engine mode so engine mode entry conditions you can see here that is the locomotive speed should be zero panto rise vcp close and the traction limit switch close and throttle idle and reverse the mode so these conditions so if we satisfy these conditions the loco will be moving to the engine mode so in the engine mode the range of speed will be 0.5 kmph to 1.5 kmph so here we can set the speed here so up to 1.5 whatever the speed we require we can set here so that the loco will be going to the engine mode there. and next if you select the self test menu so these are the options given in the self test menu so here we can test the digital inputs digital outputs meters lamps detailing discharge test lowest test contactors and relays test pwm ops test and pneumatic brake output test so these are the options several tests that can be done by the pilot so if we select any test such as here we have selected the meter test so these are the conditions for the meter test so we should be satisfying this condition loco should loco speed should be zero reverser should be centered so this is the conditions if it satisfy these conditions the loco will be testing the meter so in this meter test also we are having the several meters here speed meter test bogie t meter test bogie 1 d meter test bogie 2 t meter test bogie 2 b meter test so these are the meter test <clears throat> so if you select the speed meter test so here we can enter the speeds that is less than or equal to 180 so after that the <clears throat> in the display we can see the speed here 20 kmh here the display will be shown like this the speed meter test is in progress enter speed value is 20 so visually check the speed meter for verification so in the same way bogie t meter test so here we can see this is the t b meter here so if we enter any value from this so that will be showing in this display So here we have entered the T as 50. So here we can see the T as 50 percent. Next blower test in the same way. These are the several blowers here: oil cooling blowers, traction motor blowers, transformer oil pump test, converter oil pump test, and scavenge blower. So we can test these also here. So this is the condition for the oil cooling blower test entry. Local speed should be zero, panto rise, we should be closed, reverser should be centered, throttle idle. So these are the entry conditions there. So if we satisfy that entry condition, so the oil cooling blower will be tested. So visually set the oil cooling blower running. Next contactors and relay screen. So in contactors and relay screen, we can see these options, the vehicle control unit line converter and auxiliary converter so 
the entry conditions would be so we see contactors and resistors local speed zero reverser should be centered and throttleized so these are the conditions so if we select the conditions if we satisfy the condi conditions so the display would be flagged to contactors and resistors success in the same way contactors of l2 bogey 1 and bogey 2 l3 1 l2 2 contactors so here we can select whether we want any manual test, auto test, and free and line relay test, and we see the logic test. So here we can see bogey one, LC one, contact test test. So if we select an automatic mode, so once this contact test, every contactor will be on and off. So after that, the result will be displayed as contact test success. So these are the same related to the entry condition. Okay, the bogey one LC2, we see the logic test. So here we can see the main DOP3 from the from the DOP3 it is getting the signal. So output on or off. Here we can see the feedback status. So on or off. Here we can see the status. Here. And next AC contactor test. So AC1 contactors is AC2 contactors and AC3. Those are the auxiliary converter 1, 2 and 3 contactors. So the entry conditions for the auxiliary converter contactor test are <coughs> local speed should be zero, reverser should be centered and throttle idle, VCB open. So these are the entry conditions. So the output and feedback status here we can see that. And next, we see your digital input status. So here we can see the digital input status. So the we see one DIP one. So digital input card one. So each and every channel here we can see total twenty four number of channels. So each and every channel whether it is in on condition or off condition here we can. See. So if it is in on condition here we can see the green color light blinking on there. And in the same way, DIP2. And in the same way, digital output status also. So, if it's the number of channels for digital outputs, so each channel, whether it is on or off, we can see here. And next, communication status. So, here we can see the communication status. So, if the communication status is in green color, so it is healthy. And if it is in red color, so it is in faulty condition. The communication is failed in this line. So this is the VCU, VCU1, and this is the VCU2. The communication between the VCU1 and VCU2 through ACC card, it is shown here in the green that is healthy. And with the DMC, TCN, and other cards here, we can see that. And also with the auxiliary converter 1 here, line and traction converter 1, and line and traction converter 2. So the inter communication status here we can see. And data meters, motoring and regeneration, yeah. and pneumatic status, bogey one TC status. So here we can see all the data meters here. So isolate menu screen. So there is an option known as isolate menu screen. So there we can isolate the traction motors line converters and auxiliary converters so if there is any faulty condition in the traction motor we will go to the traction motors here select the traction motors and then isolate the traction so in that case for isolating it will be demanding a password here so if we enter the password so in the next screen we will be having the screen like this traction motors so cutting so all are in operating mode so if you want to cut out any motor so we will be selecting that and here we can see the change option here so we will be pressing the change option so that will be going to the cutout position there so 
so tm cutout entry conditions so these are the entry conditions for the traction motor cutout so reverse handle must be in neutral position and uh, mch ideal condition and local speed must be zero so these are the entry conditions so if we satisfy that entry condition the loco the tm1 will be isolated so whatever the traction motor that we select there so that will be isolated so in order to make cut in the same traction motor the same process will be there and line converters isolate so bogey one so in bogey one we are having two line converters line converter one and line converter two. bogey two same line converter one and line converter two so in the same way if we want to cut in or cut out this so we will press the change button there after that here we can see the entry conditions for the line converter lc module cutout reverse the handle must be in neutral position mch ideal and local speed must be zero and pan to down so these are the entry conditions for the line converter isolate so this is about uh, up to now we have discussed the uh, the display unit so the display session is completed up to here so next we will be moving into the next sub assembly so that is the line and traction converter so here we can see the physical appearance of the line and traction converter unit so this is the line and traction converter unit so introduction to the line and traction converter here we can see the block diagram of the line and traction converter that is the sr here so here we can see the ohc line that is of 25 kb ac 50 hertz nominal voltage so from there we are getting to the panto panto to vcb then vcb to the primary winding of the locomotive transformer and after that we can see here the filter winding here and next the traction winding so two traction winding for one line and traction converter and here the two traction winding for one line and traction converter so after that <clears throat> we are having a main contactor and a recharging contactor so in series with the precharging contactor we are having the precharging resistor here so this is the precharging resistor here so combinedly the precharging contactor and precharging resistor is known as the precharging circuit here so the precharging contactor and main contactor act as an interface between the the traction winding and the line converter here so what is the purpose of the precharging contactor and precharging resistors here so in initial condition so the dc link so the dc link will be consisting of capacitors here eight number of capacitors here so that the capacitors will be in a discharge position so in initial conditions the capacitors try to draw excess current for charging so in that case the over currents coming from the input uh could damage the igbt modules here. so here we can see the igbt modules here the line converter so that could the excess current could damage the igbt here and the capacitors here so in order to control that excess current in order to limit that excess current we are having the precharging resistor in series with the precharging contactor here so the function of the precharging resistor is to limit the excess current during the initial condition and the precharging contactor will be in on condition so up to 80% charge of the dc link here so up to the 80% charge of dc link the precharging contactor will be in on condition and after that the main contactor completes the switch <coughs> here we can see the main contactor so whenever the main contactor comes into picture the dc link will be fully charged to 100% and uh, by the way 
so the main contactor here is a motor operated contactor and the recharging contactor is electromagnetically operated contactor so after that the lc module here the line converter module so the function of the line converter module is to convert the input ac voltage to input ac voltage to dc so here the input as we have seen that is 1 to 600 volts and the rating of the winding is 1449 kV. So the 1 to 600 volts is stored in the DC link here. So 8 number of DC capacitors are there. So the DC link capacity is 2800 volts here. So after conversion of the DC, so there is a filter here, the 9th and 10th. This is a LC filter here that we are using. So the L that is uh, taken from the fraction transformer and the C is in the unit itself. So it is an 100 resonance filter. The second harmonic in the input side will be isolated by this filter. So after that, the 2800 volts that is presence in the DC link. So in order to maintain a constant DC link, so we are having the DC link over voltage protection here. So this is the brake chopper. So here we can see the brake chopper here. So that is the DC link over voltage protection circuit. So the main task of the DC link is to maintain the constant voltage. That is of the 2800 volts for supplying the line converter seat or retraction converter seat. So, in case of any excess voltages, that is about the 3000 voltage, 3000 volts, the brake chopper circuit will come into operation. So, initial conditions in normal conditions, the IGPT here, that here we can see the IGPT, that is the brake chopper IGPT, that is in the open condition. So, in case of any over voltages, so that is uh, for 3000 volts, the brake chopper IGBT will be in closed condition. So, the gate pulse will be given by the control card, and this here, the IGBT will be closed. And after that, the voltage, the excess voltage that is present in the DC link will be discharged to the sorry, resistor here, brake chopper resistor. So, in order to discharge the DC link discharge, sorry, in order to discharge the DC link in the off conditions, we are also having the breeder resistors. So, in this here, we will be having the breeder resistors here. And for protection and for the safety of the maintenance person, we are giving a DC link lamp here. So, the flickering of this lamp is directly proportional to the Deceiling voltage here. So, if the deceiling voltage is as high as 2800 volts, the LED here will be blinking fastly. The frequency of blinking will be high. So, uh, as the deceiling will be deceiling voltage is getting low, the flickering frequency will be getting low here. So, if the deceiling voltage is less than 50 volts, the deceiling lamp would be Stop so that the maintenance person could understand there is no charge in the DC link, so we can move further for the maintenance. So, this is the protection given. And next, here we can see the earth switch, the earth switch for the line and traction converter. So, during the maintenance, the maintenance person would operate this earth switch and continue the maintenance process. So, this is also for the protection purpose and next the uh, next the circuit is this ELD earth leakage detection circuit so in this circuit we are having two sets of resistors here so above the circuit we will be seeing in the further slide here so after that we are having the inverter module so the traction converter modules here so traction converter one traction converter two and traction converter three so the DC link here, the 2800 volts, 
is the input for the traction converter here. So the traction converter that converts to the three phase variable voltage and variable frequency that is 0 to 2180 volt and 0 to 160 hertz frequency that is supplied for the traction motor that is the three phase fuel gauge induction motor. So this is about the block diagram of line and traction converter unit. So in the same way line and traction converter unit 2. So LTC1, so LTC1 and LTC2, the working will be same. So next LTC consists of two line converter computers. So this is about the control unit of the line and traction converter unit. So the SR will be having the control unit. So in which we are having the two line converter computers, LIC and three traction inverter compute, control computers, CIC. So the main function of the LIC is uh, unity power factor at AC input and minimum harmonic and next stable DC link voltage to maintain the stable DC link voltage. So these are the two main functions of the line converter computer that is LICC and the main function of TIC is independent motor torque control so whether that is a motor motoring in motoring mode or in braking mode and next in wheel shift control so these are the main functions of the TIC and both LIC and TIC do fault diagnostics based on the voltages currents and speed temperatures pressure sensor so the output the signal feedbacks coming from these sensors so will be used for the fault diagnostic for the LIC and TIC and LIC and TIC communicate with VCU through redundant and communication and LIC and TIC communicates among themselves through dedicated can communication system So here we can see the physical appearance of the line and traction control unit. So we are having several slots here, so dedicated for the respective cards. So about each and every card here we can see in slot number one, slot number two, and slot number three, we are having the LIC. So one LIC here we can see this slot number one, slot number two, and slot number three. So in one LIC, we are having one power supply card, one analog input card, and one traction inverter control card. So this consists of this makes one LIC. So in the same way, the other two. So in slot number four, five, and six. So we are having the TIC. So sorry, this is the TIC one. And this is the TIC2. And in slot number seven, we are having the power supply card, and log input card, and CC card. So after that, the slot number ten is space, and slot number eleven is OFC card, and slot number twelve, that is a power supply card, and LIC. So from here we can see two LICs here. So this consists of one LIC, slot number 12, 13, 14, and 15, 16. So this makes one LIC here. So one power supply card, two digital input output card, one control card, and one analog input card. In the same way, LIC two. So here we can see. One power supply card in slot number 22, the IO card in slot number 21 and 20, and in slot number 19, the <clears throat> control card, and in slot number 18, the analog input card. And we are having a common analog input card in slot number 17. So, this is the control unit of line and traction control. So 
so we will be discussing each and every card here so line converter control computer and lipc which just a minute <clears throat> so this is the MLI CC card. So here we can see the OLC cables here, the OLC ports. So for giving the gate supplies for the <clears throat> gate inputs for the IGBT. So you can see this is the V phase bottom IGBT, V phase top IGBT, U phase bottom IGBT, U phase top IGBT. So MLICC V2 consists of a 32 bit DSP here, digital signal processor, and 116 bit microcontroller. And both communicate with each other to share the control and control status and protection information. And DSP measures the input and output voltages and currents and performs the control and protection activities of the line converter. And microcontroller that is a 16 bit microcontroller performs all the auxiliary functions in this. Next, MLTC PS. So, this is the power supply card here. So, as usual, in the we have seen the power supply card in the vehicle control unit. So, here also the power supply card function is the same. So, this card provides the regulated power supplies required for the modules of the LIC here. So these regulated power supplies are generated from the nominal 110 volts. So that is getting from the locomotive battery or battery charger. Next line converter, the analog inputs that are coming for the line converter here. So here we can see the hotel load current signal and uh, desilling voltage signal, rectifier heat sink temperature signal, transformer oil temperature signal and line converter input current signal and primary voltage PT signal. So for the card MLI AIP card that is the analog input card these are the inputs analog inputs coming. So for the next we have seen in slot number 17 the common analog input card. So these are the inputs coming for the common analog input card. So that are auxiliary current signal line and traction converter, pull and pressure signal, and uh, earth fault voltage signal, transformer oil pressure signal, harmonic filter current signal, and primary current signal, and brake chopper current signal. So these are the signals coming for the common analog input card. So next, digital input output card. So here we can see the digital input output card. So these are the digital inputs and these are the digital outputs here. So in digital inputs, we are having the picture in contactor feedback, line switch close relay feedback, line switch open relay feedback, line switch close state feedback. So these are the contactor feedback. And next, uh, the digital output card. So here we can see the picture in contactor output. The digital outputs are used for driving the contactors here. So here we can see the contactors is driven. So line switch close relay output, line switch open relay output, filter contactor outputs, filter adaptation contactor output, filter discharge adaptation contactor output, and traction inverter control computer TICC. So here we can see the TICC. So TICC also consists of a 32 bit DSP and one 16 bit microcontroller. So these both communicate with each other to share the control status and protection information. And DSP measures the input and output voltages and currents and performs the control and protection activities of line control. And the microcontroller used here performs the analog auxiliary functions here. So this is about the TICC card. So the analog input card in the traction inverter. So these are the analog inputs coming from the analog input card. So this is voltage sensor, 
UV phase module heat in temperature sensors and uh, W phase module heat in temperature and TM stator temperature and sensor 1 and sensor 2 of the TM stator and traction motor U phase current sensor and traction motor W phase current sensor. So these are the analog inputs coming for the analog input card here. And next MLT OFC. So this is the OFC card. So the MLT OFC module consists of CAN communication interface circuit, so which converts the electrical signal to optical light for data transmission and from optical signal to electrical signal for data receiving. So this consists of an over voltage limiting drive circuit. So that is the brake stopper circuit here. So the IGBT of the brake chopper IGBT is driven from this card. So next coming to the line and pre-charging contactor. So the input switch gear section, that is the input switch gear section. So consists of the main line contactor and pre-charging contactor and pre-charging resistor here. So the main and pre-charging contactor are used to isolate or connect the main transformer to the traction converter. So the precharging resistor and precharging contactor, so together they are called as the precharging circuit as we have discussed. And the precharging resistor is switched in series with the input of, to the line converter by precharging contact. The precharging contactor, sorry, the precharging resistor is used to limit the current through the diesel link capacitors and IGBT diodes. So in order to protection, in order for the protection of the diesel link capacitors and the IGBT module. So here we can see the physical appearance of the recharge contactor, the precharging resistor, and the main contact. So this main contactor is motor driven, and this recharging contactor is electromagnetically operated in. So next coming to the over voltage limiting circuit. So here we can see the over voltage limiting circuit. That is the brake chopper circuit. So in this module we are having two IGBT. The top IGBT is uh, not used. So it is shorted like this. And the bottom IGBT is used. So in normal conditions it is in the open condition. So whenever there is an excess voltage in the DC link. So that is about 3000 volts. So this IGBT will be getting signal from the brake chop for the OFC card to here and the IGBT will be closed. So in that condition, so the excess voltage that is present in the DC link voltage will be discharged to the R2 resistor here. So the R2 resistor is of 4 to 6 ohms. So here we can see the physical appearance of the R2 resistor here. So uh, here we can see the over voltage limiting circuit is used to limit the over voltage in the DC link capacitor during abnormal conditions or during transiency. So over voltage in the DC link capacitor may occur due to the conditions for the over voltage are non-receptive OHC during regeneration and transient load condition. So these are the conditions so where we get the over voltage in the DC link capacitor. So next, earth fault detection circuit. So in this earth fault detection circuit, we will be uh, having two set of resistors here. So one is of 66 kilo ohms and the other one is of 20.4 kilo ohms. So in R1, you can see here, that is a 66 kilo ohms resistor and R2 is the 20.4 kilo ohms resistor here. So this will be connected across the distance here. So by using the formula, we have uh, taken a ratio here. So that is UE by QDC. So if that ratio is uh, less than 0 0.5 volts, sorry, 0 0.5 less than 0 0.5 for two seconds. So the action that is taken by the system is first fault on the positive potential of the distance. In the same way, so if the ratio U, UE by UDC is greater than 0 0.5 and less than 0 0.65 for two seconds, <clears throat> the system will consider it as 
earth fault in the ac part of traction converter traction circuit so example that is the traction winding of the transformer or traction motor so if the ratio is between 0.65 and to 0.85 that is a normal normal operation and if the ratio is greater than 0.85 for 2 seconds the system will be considering it as earth fault on the negative potential of the dc linkage so this is about the earth fault detection circuit in the line and traction converter so before moving to the further slide so up to here we have discussed about the earth fault detection circuit so in the next section that is in the afternoon so we will be discussing the further slide further slide so that is the next session is from the 2:30 to 4:30 hello sir hello sir <clears throat> Can you hear me? Hello. Second second class uh, uh, start uh, lunch ke baad. Yes sir. That is from two thirty to four thirty. Ah. Uh. So is it is it fine, sir? Uh, Lagbhag two thirty. Yes, sir. As you are comfortable, sir, you can mention the time. Sir, actually, when we isolate that line converter, yes, sir. Uh, how many? What is the power uh, cut off or whatever the TMs are cut off? So, if we isolate the line and traction converter one, the bogey one motors will be isolated. That means half of the power of the locomotive will be reduced. You told about isolating line converters. There are four line converters actually. Okay, okay. So you are talking about the line converter. So that we will be discussing in the redundancy concept. Sir. The next slide will be that only. So in that time we will be discussing. So in the further slides it is present there. We can discuss. Okay. That. And what about speed sensor isolating through display? So there is no speed sensor isolation through display. And motor isolating is there. Line converter isolation is there. And the auxiliary converter isolation. What is the role of a uh, speed sensor if there is any message log like uh, log field detection or something like that? We can't isolate that speed sensor. No, sir, uh, we cannot isolate that. Speed. Directly, we have to isolate the motor. Yes, sir. So if there is any fault in the speed sensor, also we can isolate that. Motor. Okay, okay. Thank you. क्लास अभी स्टॉप कर दीजिए अब सेकंड क्लास स्टार्ट आफ्टर लंच ओके आपको टाइम है तो क्या कुछ टाइम तो उठ रही है ओके ओके थैंक यू
where from print it now print it thing so don't disturb that system okay let it be माइक नोट किया क्या नहीं माइक लो लेफ्ट हो गया नहीं राइट हो गया 